In this lesson, I'm going to talk about linear independence. For a given set of vectors, let's call that set S, and S contains the vectors v1, v2, up to vn. This vector equation, c1, v1, c2, v2, up to cn, vn, equal to the zero vector, always has the trivial solution. If we set all the constants c1, c2, up to cn to be zero, of course, this vector equation would be true. We say that this solution is the trivial solution when all the constants are equal to zero. However, there may also have non-trivial solutions. Suppose, for example, that our S is this set here. We check here C1 to be equal to 1, C2 to be equal to negative 3, and C3 to be equal to negative 1. Then, if we compute this is v1, v2, v3, c1, v1, plus c2, v2, plus c3, v3. This is equal to 1 minus 1. First entry is 0. And then we have 3 minus 3, 0. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Plus 5, we get Zero. So if this is the case, we were able to find constants that are not all equal to zero, which satisfy this equation. We are now ready to define linear independence. A set of vectors in a vector space is called linearly independent if this vector equation has only the trivial solution. If there are non-trivial solutions, then S is called linearly dependent. So just like in our previous example S, we were able to find constants which would satisfy this vector equation and those constants are not all equal to zero. So therefore, that set is linearly dependent. Here are some examples of linearly dependent sets in R2. We have 1, 2, and 2, 4. Of course, because if we set 2 times 1, 2, minus 1 times 2, 4, this is of course equal to 0, 0. And for this one, what would be the constant that we will put in front of 0, 0 and 1, 2, so that this would be equal to the 0 vector. Take note that I can always put any non-zero number here, let's say 5. And then for this, of course, this should always be equal to 0. Therefore, this set is linearly dependent. Here is a theorem that tells us the linear independence of some special sets. First, a finite set that contains the zero vector is linearly dependent. Why is that? If you have a zero vector and you have other vectors, let's say v1 up to vn, you can form c times the zero vector plus zero times v1 plus 0 times v2, and so on, where c here is not equal to 0, this forms a non-trivial solution. Next, a set with exactly one vector is linearly independent if and only if that vector is not, this is the 0 vector. This is just saying that if v is not equal to 0 and you just have one element, then this set is linearly independent. But of course, if the single element is the zero vector, then this is linearly dependent. We can use the first one because this set contains a zero vector, so therefore this is linearly dependent. Here's a theorem that would enable us to determine if a set containing two vectors is linearly dependent. Two vectors u and v are linearly dependent if and only if one is a scalar multiple of the other. Take note that this is if and only if, meaning to say both directions are true. If two vectors are linearly dependent, then they must be scalar multiples of each other. And the other way around, if two vectors are scalar multiple of each other, then they must be linearly dependent. Now, this makes sense because if u and v are linearly dependent, then that would mean that there are constants C1, C2, not both of which 
are equal to 0 such that C1U plus C2V is equal to 0. Since we know that not both of them are 0 without loss of generality, I can just assume that, let's say C1 is not equal to 0. If that is the case, I can solve for U here because C1U is equal to C2V. Take note that this is the 0 vector. That's not the 0 scalar. So therefore, U is equal to negative C2 over C1 times the vector V. We can have C2 over C1 because we know that C1 is not equal to 0. So here, I started with the set UV being linearly dependent. And here, I obtained that U is a scalar multiple of V because U is equal to a constant times V. Let us determine whether the following set of vectors in R3 is linearly independent or linearly dependent. So I have here the vector. So take note that to check for linear independence, we want to know if the solution to this vector equation is the trivial solution or if there are non-trivial solutions. So let me just copy it. For the first entry, we have C1 minus 2C3. For the second entry, we have 2C1 plus C2. And for the third entry, we have 3C1 plus 2C2 plus C3. And this is equal to the zero vector, 0, 0, 0. Since these two matrices are equal, then component-wise, they will be equal. Let us now form our augmented matrix. We have 1, 0, negative 2, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1. Notice class, the row entries here, look at that. 1, 0, negative 2, look at that. 1, 0, negative 2. 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. So th therefore, from now on, whenever you're asked to determine if a set in Rn is linearly independent, you already know that the resulting coefficient matrix would be like this. And remember that this is equivalent to our system Ax equals 0, right? We want to know whether it has only the trivial solution. Recall also that a system AX equals 0 has only the trivial solution if and only if A is invertible. But A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to 0. So remember that when checking for linear independence, you just have to check if the resulting augmented matrix will have a non-zero determinant. Since this is just a 3 by 3 matrix, I can use a combination of cofactor expansion and column operation. So I want to use the first row. I want to turn this into a zero. How can I do that? I would make C3 plus 2C1. That would be my new C3 to kill off this entry. So therefore, this one would be 0, 4, and 7. I will use the cofactor expansion along the first row. So therefore, this is positive times 1 times the determinant of this row and column. We have 1, 4, 2, 7. And this determinant is equal to 7 minus 8, which is equal to 1. So therefore, since we have a non-zero determinant, this means that Ax equals 0 has only the trivial solution. So the only solution would be C1, C2, C3 equal to 0. So therefore, this set is linearly independent.
So here is a summary, the test for linear independence. The first step is to always form this vector equation. And we use Gaussian elimination to determine whether the system has a unique solution. Or an alternative method is that if the coefficient matrix is a square matrix, then you just have to check. Let's say that the coefficient matrix is A. You just have to compute for the determinant. If you use this method, if the system has only the trivial solution, then the set is linearly independent. If the system also has non-trivial solutions, then it is linearly dependent. What about if you use this one? When you compute for the determinant, if the determinant of A is not equal to 0, then that means that the set is linearly independent. If the determinant of A is equal to 0, then the set is linearly dependent. Now take note that this method over here will only work if your coefficient matrix is a square matrix. Remember that. Caution elimination will work whatever is the size of your coefficient matrix. Here's another example. Let us determine whether this set in P2 is linearly independent or linearly dependent. I have the set over here. Our first step is to form the equation C1 times V1. This is our first vector plus C2 times our second vector. plus C3 times our third vector. What is the zero vector in P2? The zero vector in P2 is the zero polynomial. Always remember that two polynomials are equal if and only if the corresponding coefficients of your variables are equal. So if this is the case for our constants, constant on the left-hand side is c1 plus 2c2. Of course, on the other side, it's always equal to 0. Coefficient of x on the left side is c1 plus 5c2 plus c3. Coefficient of x squared on the left side, it's negative 2c1 minus c2 plus c3. The augmented matrix will be as follows. We have 1, 2, 0. Take a look at this matrix class. Again, you can notice that these are just the coefficients of your vector. For this one, you have 1 plus x minus 2x squared. For the second vector, you have 2 plus 5x minus x squared. For the third vector, you have 0 plus x plus x squared. So that can be a good shortcut. Whenever you form this one, you don't have to do all of this because this one would be the resulting augmented matrix. This coefficient matrix is again a square matrix, so I will just use the second method. I will compute for the determinant of A. Just like what I did in the previous example, I want to work with the first row. It's just that I want to turn this into 0. How can I do that? We have C2 minus 2C1 to turn this to 0. This one would be 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. want to compute for this determinant. And this is equal to? This is positive 1, I'm using this entry here, times 1, times the determinant of, remove this and remove this, we get 3, 1, 3, 1. We have two rows which are equal, so definitely this determinant is equal to 0. Or if you want, 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. This tells us that if the determinant is equal to 0, then the solution ax equals 0 has non-trivial solutions. So therefore, the set is linearly dependent. 
One more example, this time we are in the vector space M22. We again have three vectors over here and we want to test whether this is linearly dependent or linearly independent. So again, we form C1 times V1, C2 times V2, plus C3 times V3. This one is equal to, what is the zero vector in M22? That's the matrix whose entries are all equal to zero. One one entry would be 2C1 plus 3C2 plus C3. The one two entry is 2C1. The two one entry is 2C2 plus 3C3. And lastly, the 2, 2 entry is C1 plus C2. And this is equal to the zero vector. The matrices are equal. Then we equate the entries to be equal. So therefore, we have the following system. Let us now form the resulting augmented matrix. We have 2, 3, 1, 0, and we have 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, and lastly, 1, 1, 0. Take note here that our coefficient matrix is no longer a square matrix, so we cannot use the determinant technique. We really have to use Gaussian elimination to solve the system. I switched rows 1 and 4. And then I want to zero out these entries. I now obtain this matrix. Take a look at this one. These two rows here are scalar multiples of each other. Therefore, we can turn this into a row of zeros. If we set R2 plus 2 R4, we get So since this is just 0, 0, there's no inconsistency here. We can just delete that one. And we can just view this as this one. Therefore, we are left again with a coefficient matrix, which is 3 by 3. And we can now use the second technique that we had. We can compute for this determinant. Let's call that A. I just copied the coefficient matrix here and I am computing for its determinant. I have exactly one and zero entry on the second row. So therefore I will evaluate the cofactor expansion along the second row. We have plus minus plus, so that's positive one times the determinant of this matrix, one, zero, zero, three. And this determinant is equal to three, which is not equal to zero. So therefore, the solution has only the trivial solution. And therefore, our set is linearly independent. To end this lesson, I will give a geometric interpretation of how two or three vectors in R3 or R2 would look like if they are linearly independent or not. For the first one, if you have two vectors, whether in R2 or in R3, they would be linearly independent if and only if they do not lie on the same line. So for example, here, if we are in R2, these two vectors here do not lie on the same line. So therefore, just by looking at that, we can say that this is linearly independent. Here, we are already in R3. 
if this is my vector u, 1, 2, 3, let me go further. If I get a scalar multiple of that, this is my u here. This vector over here would be 3.5 u. They are linearly dependent. For example, if I have this v, this vector v here and this vector u here, since they do not lie on the same line, therefore they would be linearly independent. What about if we have three vectors in R3? Three vectors in R3 would be linearly independent if and only if they do not lie on the same plane. Again, going back to our R3 over here, if I get another vector, I do not want this vector to lie on that plane. So for example, this one. This is the vector F, this one. These three vectors do not lie on the same plane. These two vectors, of course, if you have two vectors, they will always lie on the same plane. There will always be a plane containing the two vectors. But if you get another vector and that vector does not lie on the plane, then these three vectors would form a linearly independent set. We just finished studying spanning sets and linearly independent sets. In our next lesson, we would see how these two concepts are related and these two concepts will enable us to define the basis of a vector space.